Hey guys, it's Kay James, your favorite customer enablement engineer here at Ambassador Labs. And today we are talking about the web application firewall. So if you didn't know, EdgeSat comes with a built-in web application firewall or WAF that can be enabled to protect your applications from common attacks. It uses Caraza's WAF library to check predefined rules and allow or deny requests. And it's pretty easy to set up too. So if you're familiar with EdgeStack's filters, you'll notice a similar style of configuration with the WAF, where there are two CRDs, one that defines the rules and the other that dictates how we enforce those rules. Um, if you follow the quick start, the process of standing up a WAF is really simple. Um, first, we'll create that web application firewall resource, and then we will, um, um, and this is where we define our WAF rules. Um, and in the quick start, you'll find that we have some WAF rules published by Ambassador Labs already. So this is a good starting point that you could use as a reference um, when it comes to creating your own rules. You can take these rules and manipulate them, add and remove your own rules, create your own rules, whatever you want to do. Um, but with our quick start and with the rules that Ambassador Labs already has published, it's a really great starting point um, to do that. And um, this is what it would look like. So if we apply this, right, we'll see that we have our web application firewall resource created. So now our rules exist in EdgeStack. Um, and we'll come back and talk more about the rules in just a second. But first, let me show you how easy it is to now apply these rules. With the web application firewall policy, you can now choose where we enforce our WAF rules. So if you remember filters in the filter policy, you can specify a host and path for each filter um, at that and where you want to apply it, right? You can do something similar with the WAF. Um, but for simplicity's sake, uh, I'm just going to apply it to all my um, hosts and paths that I have um, by not including specifying the host and path. Um, so now we have our policy created. So now we have the rules and we define where we want those rules to be applied. So now I can test out my WAF um, with a command like this. Um, you'll see that it's kind of an empty response. So if we send that again with a, oops, do 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 do, with a little dash V so we can actually see the the details, we get a 403. So within the predefined WAF rules, there is a rule for um, specific user agent, right? So we have, uh, with this request we sent, this particular user agent header is not valid, it's not allowed, so thus the request is blocked. So boom, just like that, we have a working WAF. So if I kind of sent the same thing um, without this header, the request is allowed through. So that is that. That is how easy it is to stand up the web application firewall, the WAF, with EdgeStack. Um, so before we end this though, I did say I'd talk more about the rules. So I mentioned that you can use our rules as a reference and apply your own. If you go in and want to start testing our custom WAF rules and such, it may be useful to take advantage of the logging options during your testing. Um, within the WAF resource, um, you can set the rules to logging modes so that when a rule is triggered, it will log the offending rule instead of just blocking the request. Um, and this can be useful, um, a useful way to, you know, check. you could check your edge stack container logs and verify that the expected rule is working, um, which is really helpful when it comes to troubleshooting um, and maybe testing multiple different rules. Sometimes it's hard to tell, you know, what rule is being triggered and such. So using this, um, will allow you to check your logs there. Additionally, the rules are written in Seclang, so definitely take advantage of Karas's documentation as well um, as another reference for editing, creating your own rules. Um, within there, you can kind of set up debug level um, logging through uh, through Seclang and that type of thing. So there's also some more verbose, verbose stuff that you could do there. Um, and you could edit Ambassador Labs rules using config maps and the web application firewall. But depending on whether you would like to disable the rule completely or apply a certain rule to certain requests, you'll need to be careful the order that you put that config map. So if you look at my example here, I have my config map at the bottom. Um, and this means that it will override any rule that was um, in the above listed rules up here. Um, so it will take some experimenting, some trial and error, right? 
um, when you actually come down to, to testing these rules and, and doing it yourself. But yeah, take advantage of the logging. <laughs> so let's um, do my example here. I have this custom rule where you want to block certain requests with a certain string in the URL. So if we look at my um, config, config file here, um, you can see that I have this. Um, if the URL contains the string here, then we will block the request, right? Just for simplicity of the, the example. Um, and then we have the config map um, in the WAF rule, or we're pointing to that config map in the, in the WAF rule um, for that. So I will apply this. Oh, I'm pointing to the wrong file place. Oh, so my my config map already exists. Cool, love that. So now, if we want, we can um, include that config map in our WAF resource um, and apply this, right? So let's do kubectl apply. Uh, what is this? WAF test yaml. Cool. So now our uh, policy and WAF resources have been edited. So now I can test uh, that a request with that uh, string that I talked about. If it's in there, we should get a 403. So I'm going to just paste my little request there. And boom, you can see I got a 403. So very easily, we were able to update the um, WAF rules, right? And apply a new one, put our own custom rule on top of the existing rules that we ship with Ambassador or that we you know, have in our quick start. Um, and then we could test, see if this little string is not present. Um, yeah, so now we get a response code 200, the request is allowed through. So that was a very, very basic example. Um, I think if you're not an expert in SecLang, it may be a little bit of a learning curve at first trying to um, write your own custom rules. You could see that setting up the WAF is pretty easy to do. And if you have any more questions or um, run into any trouble, uh, you can see our documentation on the WAF or definitely reach out to us uh, if you have more other questions that aren't answered in the documentation. Um, so head over to getambassador.io um, and we'll talk to you soon.